Hello, I'm Dr. Ellis from North Austin Pediatrics and today I'm going to go over a little bit about uh, summer safety and go over our handout that we have on our website northaustinpediatrics.com. It's under the education tab and it's called summer fun and safety. So as far as sun, they, they don't recommend that babies under six months get any direct uh, sunlight. But if you are going to have your baby out and you think they might be exposed by indirect sunlight or direct sunlight, like if you go on a boat or the beach, you can use sunscreen that has just zinc or titanium, basically a sun block that doesn't have any chemical sunscreen. So under six months, we recommend the ones that just have zinc and titanium. And um, CeraVe has a good one, Aveeno, Baby Ganix has one that's just zinc. So you can look for that as an ingredient. In a pinch, you can use your desitin. It's basically the same thing. And then when you're over six months, you can use sunscreens that have uh, chemical sunscreens. But we do like you to avoid oxybenzone because it has uh, an estrogen effect. And one of the ones that is good is this Baby Ganix SPF 50. It has a zinc, titanium, and a, a chemical sunscreen. The chemical sunscreens last longer than just a physical block. If you're using the ones that are just a physical block, make sure you reapply them often. It of course is a lot better to just have them wear those swim shirts or rash guards that are long sleeves and hats and cover them up as much as you can. And let me tell you from personal experience, if you let them get away with just putting sunscreen one time, they'll always kind of complain about doing the, the rash guard of the shirt. So don't ever let them go without a shirt and they will know that's the rule and won't complain about it. As far as water safety, always work, make sure that your child has a life jacket, follows the rules here in Texas until they're 12 or 12 and under, has to wear a life vest when you're on a boat. So all the states are different, so know your rules, but if your child doesn't know how to swim, even if they're over 12, they should wear a life jacket anywhere around the water. Take swimming classes. You can have your baby take swimming classes even six months and up that teaches them how to get to the side what they call resource swimming. Now as far as mosquito repellent, we um, recommend that you use OFF, which the active ingredient is DEET, because that's the most effective and the one studied the most and has a um, good safety profile. Uh, it's approved for two months and up, and they do it two months and up because West Nile virus is now every summer in every state. And the virus always shows up around August here in, in Austin, and so you, the risk-benefit ratio is there to use DEET. It only is toxic if someone were to drink it. It's not toxic um, when you put it on your body, but it is a solvent, so you wanna make sure that you uh, wipe it off when you come inside with a wipey because it'll dissolve your plastics and so forth. And you can use anywhere from 10% to 30% DEET, but uh, if you use 10%, it's only gonna at last an hour or two. So if you're gonna be out for a considerable amount of time, it's better to just use a 25 to 30 percent. More than 30 percent is not necessary. The effectiveness is as good as 100 percent once you get to 30 percent. Some alternatives to, to DEET are picaridin, which is an ingredient in an in Avon Skin Cell Soft, but you need to have it at least 20 percent or more. And uh, IR 3535, which is in Bullfrog Mosquito Coast. That one, Bullfrog Mosquito Coast, has sunscreen, chemical sunscreens, and the mosquito repellent. Of course, nothing is as effective as DEET. Um, for younger babies under two months, you just want, if you're strolling around and it's the dusk or dawn, you probably want to use like a mosquito net around the car seat. Unfortunately, mosquitoes love black and all the car seats seem to be black and they're attracted to it. Make sure your kids wear light colored clothes. They're not attracted to light colored clothes and that'll help out a lot. Another option if you own your own house is to use a uh, spray that you attach to your hose and you spray your lawn and your neighbor's lawn. You want to make sure you're using something that doesn't affect bees, that's not dangerous for bees, okay? Now, what do you do if your baby gets bitten by a bunch of mosquitoes? If they're over six months, you can use children's Benadryl. And if you go on to our website, there's uh, handouts. But basically, it's about the same dose as your Tylenol. Um, if you were going to take 2.5 of Tylenol, you can take about 2.5 of children's Benadryl every uh, six to eight hours. 
You do not want to put Benadryl on topically. So a lot of things have Benadryl in them. And apparently if you put Benadryl on your skin, you can eventually become allergic to Benadryl. Who knew? So don't use topical Benadryl, but you can use topical hydrocortisone. So let's say they get ant bites or, um, or mosquito bites. And you know how kids get these huge, big quarter size welts, they're all bumpy and then they get dark because of the sunlight. You, if to avoid that, what you can do is put the hydrocortisone onto one of those waterproof band-aids or tattoo band-aids that 3M makes, they're called Next Care uh, waterproof band-aids. Put the, the cream, the ointment or the cream on the pad and put it on the mosquito bite and just leave it there for two to three days. And it makes it stronger if it's under occlusion and it'll make uh, the mosquito bite not get so inflamed or a chigger bite. If you're in Texas, eventually we will get chigger bites. Chiggers are tiny little red bugs. They're called red bugs in some areas and they are in the dead um, leaves and in the grass and you walk by them, they get onto your skin and they crawl and they, whenever, wherever they stop, like in a fold, your armpit or your pant line or your sock line, they'll bite you and do, they don't burrow in your skin, so you don't have to put mus um, nail polish on it. They just are really itchy, and they last for a long time. So they'll get, you know, they'll, especially in the pant line, they'll get there and the kids will be so itchy. Uh, if you're really itchy and you can put cortisone under occlusion again with a Band-Aid, do that, but if it's like in a fold, you'll just have to put the cortisone on three times a day, uh, maximum of 14 days. If they're super bad, you can come into the office for an office visit and let us see them. Sometimes you might want to do a um, prescription strength um, cortisone. For tick bites, you want to remove the tick as soon as you see it. You can either use a tweezer at the base and pull it out. You never want to squeeze the tick and get the juice and because if there's rickettsial bacteria in there, it can get into the wound. Rickettsia is the type of uh, uh, bacteria that causes like Lyme's disease and Rocky Mountain spotted fever. We don't have um, a lot of those diseases here in Texas. But there is a type of similar to Rocky Mountain spotted fever you can get from the Lone Star tick. So um, when you take the tick out, you want to take a picture of it. You don't have to go get it tested or anything like that. They don't recommend that, but you either keep the tick uh, and um, or take a picture of it. And, and the great way to take it out if you're at home and you're not in the woods is to use a cotton ball with some soap, some liquid soap on it and just twirl it on the tick and the tick will kind of get stuck in there and it'll come right out. I've done that before and it works really well. If you're not at home or you don't have any soap and cotton balls, you can use uh, two credit cards and kind of go underneath the tick and pull it out. But always take a picture of the tick in case something happens. And if they get a rash on that on that area, you need to let us know. Like Lyme's disease and some other things will give a round target lesion around the, the tick bite and, and elsewhere. Um, it might take a, you know, a few days for that to show up, but make sure you call us if that happens. As far as, um, as the itchiness for any of the bites, again, cortisone and oral Benadryl, but not topical Benadryl. Um, if you get poison ivy or anything itchy, you can also use Caladryl. It's calamine lotion and Promoxine and no longer has uh, Benadryl in it. So Caladryl is fine to use, but you really have to use a steroid for poison ivy. And remember poison ivy has uh, three leaves. So this poison oak, they look similar. And the outside leaves have the thumb. So that's kind of a little extra thing on the outside. The center leaf, the thumbs are, are, are symmetric. So any three leaves with a little bit of a red stem, might even look almost like a tree, is poison ivy and stay away from it. It takes a few days for me to get itchy from it, but it'll be like, you know, blotches and streaks and really itchy and can get blistery. If it's, uh, if it's, if it's pretty itchy in a lot of area, you'll need to come in because sometimes they have to do a prescription strength steroid and an oral steroid. If it's just a few little areas, you can try the cortisone. Now to avoid the skin from getting darkened when you get bug bites, especially dark skin kids and mosquito bites will get really dark afterwards. You want to use sunscreen that has zinc in it um, for that summer because you don't want your kid to be, have a bunch of black spots everywhere. If you get ant bites, ant bites um, have a, a chemical called formic acid in it. That's why they're called formigas in Brazil or hormigas, they have formic acid, and it makes a sterile abscess, meaning there's white cells in there and they look like 
pus, but the pus has no bacteria in it. So you're not supposed to pop them. Of course, your kid might scratch them. And if they scratch them, then use antibiotic ointment. Any kind of thing that might get infected, you can use uh, bacitracin ointment. Um, if you're not allergic to it, you can use uh, Neosporin, but this is less allergenic than, than polymyxin B or Neomycin. I'm allergic to polymyxin B, so I use this. And don't worry if your kid has a swelling in the area or has um, you know, some bluish red discoloration in the swell, swollen foot. That's a local reaction. You can, you can use Benadryl. If it's painful, you can also use Motrin. But if they have what we call a systemic reaction that's in the body, like they have hives everywhere or they were flush or they felt faint, they're truly allergic to ants and they need to go to the allergist and get allergy uh, ant immunotherapy. So local reactions is fine to treat with cold compresses, Motrin, oral Benadryl, hydrocortisone, antibiotic ointment, but anything that's more than just local, you need to call us and let us know and make an appointment with I think that pretty much covers it. Um, I just want everybody to be safe and have a good time and uh, avoid all those mosquitoes. Apparently at this time of year, it's gonna be really bad. Uh, this year is gonna be really bad, the summer of 2021. Um, where they're having record amounts of mosquitoes probably because of all of those rains. And try to use something safe to, uh, to, uh, to avoid the mosquitoes. Oh, and the reason that we don't recommend you use uh, things that are with, with, I call it the granola products, the, the herbal products for like lavender, rosemary, and uh, lemon oil of eucalyptus on kids is because it has an estrogen effect and they don't work. So you just get you know, bitten anyway and nobody wants to get extra boobies because of their lavender. So stay away from that. And there's also some other products that you could use that are safe for environment that there's these little discs that you can put in standing water that are a bacteria, I think it's a bacteria that the, that the mosquitoes eat, and it's not dangerous for your birds and for anything else. So they look like a little donut that you stick into standing water. So use things like that that are safe. And if you guys have any questions or, uh, or need more information, our website will link you to a handout from the American Academy of Pediatrics. You can go on healthychildren.org and access summer safety information there. Our, this website is under education and then you click down to summer safety and again our website is naustinpeds.com or northaustinpediatrics.com. There's also a, a good information on classes uh, for, for uh, swimming on collinshope.org. Alrighty, thanks everybody.